Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this video, we're going to be doing some more dots and ECS. It's going to be a follow up to yesterday's video where we created some damaging systems where a projectile can move, hit the player. When it hits the player, it destroys itself and deals damage to the player. And then a damage system comes along later and resolves the damage, figures out how much to deal, and subtracts it from the player's health. Then, if the player dies, they get destroyed, and that's the current implementation. In this video, we're going to be creating blocking so that uh, if a, an entity has a block component, the actual block will be reduced first from the damage before or the health so that you can actually block damage okay we're going to be creating that it'll be really simple because of the way ecs is so modular and really easy to add new things in without breaking old systems i hope you guys enjoy the video let's get into it so this video is going to be very short step one will be creating the block component won't take more than 30 seconds then step two will be creating the system it'll take a little bit longer but not really that much longer and we won't have to go back and touch old scripts and change things around because that's the whole point in ecs it's all very modular everything is separate and independent of each other so when you make a system you don't need references to other systems or anything like that um except from if you're trying to you know update in a certain order but even then you don't need a reference you just need to tell it which type we've used it in the previous video if you haven't seen that then i recommend going back and watching yesterday's video but yeah let's get into it so step one as i said is creating the component here it is it's very simple just add it to all our components from yesterday it's a public struct block i component data and it stores a block value then if for example you gain block twice in a turn you just add this block value uh, rather than using a buffer like damage damage should be a buffer in my opinion because you have you know 10 fire damage coming in, 20 water damage, you want those to be separated, whereas block is just block. Now, that's the thing. If you have, have a different need than I do, which is just storing a block value, then you can change that around whatever suits you. But we just want to store some block, and I've made a generate authoring component, so when we're testing and stuff, we can just drag block onto something. But in your gameplay, you would actually want to add this manually. Uh, well, sorry, not manually, like in code. For example, you might cast a spell and you gain block, so you'd add this component, or maybe you already have this component and you just add to the value. You know, it's up to you, whatever you need. But the benefit to doing it this way is that now in the uh, editor, if I go over to the player, I can just drag on some block. And I've said the player has 50 block and he has 100 health. So effectively 150 health, but obviously block can be like replenished and it ha it takes damage before the health actually takes damage, the block takes damage. Now that means that the player effectively has 150 health and these projectiles do 150 damage altogether because they do 50 each. So it should require all three projectiles to hit the player to kill him. Now, because we haven't actually got the block system, if I press play, he should actually die from two because uh, if I pause and we go to the entity debugger and click on the player, even though he has 50 block and 100 health, you'll notice as the projectiles hit him, the first one subtracts 50 from the health, the next one subtracts 50 from health, and now he's dead. Because block is currently just a value that the player has, but it doesn't actually do anything. So what we need to do is we need to now create the block system. Let's go to step two. So the first thing to do is to make the block system, job component system, the same as all the others. Make sure it updates before resolving damage. We obviously need block to actually happen before we calculate how much damage to take. And then equally, if we go over to the damage collision system, we want to make sure we apply damage before block because otherwise what will happen is block might apply before damage is dealt and then we won't block anything because as far as it's concerned, there is no damage because no damage has yet been dealt. So we need to effectively apply damage block damage, resolve damage. Now, if you add more systems into the mix, you might have to shuffle that order around. Just make sure you get the order, that's the really important thing. But now that we've got this, we just need to create the system. The first thing to do for the system is to have the end simulation entity command buffer, just like yesterday's video. And we just want to get the uh, system here and cache it. And then that means when we actually write the uh, query, we can pass in the entity command buffer, which will remove the block component from the entity. Now, as I said, you might not, for your game, you might not want to remove block. You might want to keep it and just like have it be zero. It completely depends on what you want. Technically, removing the component is uh, less performant because if you change the structure of an entity, then it actually requires um, the entity itself in memory to be moved to a different chunk. I've not actually covered a video on how the you know underlying mechanics works for ECS and DOTS. I can do a video on that if you guys want to know more in depth how it works under the hood. But essentially, um, what you might do is you might leave the block component on the entity to say, effectively, this can be blocked. So instead of adding block at runtime, you just modify the value of it. You know, as I said, it doesn't really matter. It depends on your needs. I'm gonna just go ahead and remove it. So what we want to do for our update is we want to, um, just like yesterday, we want to store a command buffer. Um, so we're gonna say entity command buffer. Okay, let me zoom in a bit. ECB and we set it equal to the system ECB dot create um, whoops it's create command buffer 
but it's the system <laughs> instead. So let's create command buffer. And now that we've got this, we can actually use it in our query. So we'll do entities, uh, entities dot for each. We want to do for each. We want to access the entity because we want to tell it to remove its uh, block component. We actually want reference to the block component. So block like so, we'll call it block. We need to do ref because we're actually going to be modifying the block value. So we need a reference to it. If we just passed it in, it would be effectively read only. Um, then we want the uh, reference as well to the dynamic buffer of type damage. Okay, just like how the uh, damage resolve or the resolve damage system queries over the dynamic buffer damage and reduces the health, we want to actually reduce the uh, damage itself. So we're going to say on here, um, if we call it like damage buffer, for example. Okay, uh, then we need to use the lambda here like so. I've just done my brackets wrong. Let me just fix those. Okay, um, then for this, we're not gonna be worrying about burst and everything and setting all that up because it requires us to kind of change how we do this since we're modifying the structure. So we're gonna say without burst, okay, dot without burst dot for each. At the end of this, we call run. And at the end, we just return default because we're not doing anything with the input dependencies. And now we can write the logic. So one of the things we're going to have to do is actually modify the value or the each value in this dynamic buffer. Now, the problem with that is you can't actually just modify that because if we say, for example, uh, damage buffer uh, zero, so element zero, obviously you do this in a loop, value, and value is an integer of how much damage. Let's say we subtract it by one. It doesn't actually work because we can't modify that. So the way you are meant to do this is we're meant to say, well, first of all, we don't really want to do anything if there's no damage, we'll just return, right? So we'll say damage buffer dot length. If the damage buffer dot length is zero, just return. Now, inside this um, block here, return is like local to this, it's scoped. So return doesn't actually exit this method. Normally in a function, return will get you out of it. But because of how this Lambda works, it actually just means go to the next uh, query basically, which is what we want. So now we're gonna do a for I loop. We're gonna say damage value, uh, whoops. So no, we have to actually make that first. So we're gonna say we want a dynamic buffer in here of type int, because that's what the actual damage value is. And we'll call it damage value buffer, okay. And that's equal to the damage buffer dot, and we can call this method. Uh, I don't know why it's not coming up, but anyway, reinterpret, and then we pass in the type int. So, as far as I'm aware, how this works, you know, under the hood, is it goes to our damage struct and it says, okay, um, int, so it gets us this value. Now, if you had two things of the same type, I'm not quite sure how that works, but it works for what we need to do now, so that, that's uh, fine by me. Now, we're going to loop over everything here, so we're going to say um, damage buffer dot length. We want to say, well, let's calculate how much damage we're going to block. So damage to block. Let me zoom in a bit. So the damage to block is math.min because it's going to be the smallest value. Okay, that math.min returns the smallest value between uh, the value of the block, so how much block we have left, or damage value buffer i. Okay. Now the reason we do this, in case you don't get the logic, is let's say we have 10 block and 20 damage coming in. Well, the block is less, so that's how much we're going to block because we only have 10 block. But let's say we've got 10 block and we're dealing five damage, then we're not gonna take off 10 and make it do minus five damage, we're just gonna make it do five. So whichever the smallest value is, is how much we're actually gonna block. And then with that value, we're gonna uh, subtract it from block so that when we come around to do the next loop, um, we've actually already lost some of our shield basically. So damage to block. And then we also want to do it to the buffer. We want to say reduce that much damage there. So damage value buffer I minus equals damage to block. So now we've actually uh, done that, we can say, well, now if we're out of block, now this is the part that, depending on what your logic is, you might want to do this or might not, but I'm gonna do it, so I'm gonna say, if block.value is zero, then ecb.remove component of type block. So we're gonna remove the block component on the entity from this query. Then, uh, that's it actually, yeah, there's nothing else to do. So this is the thing that I said would change based on whether you want to leave it or not. So if you want to leave it, then just leave it basically. Um, it's got no block, so you calculate how much to block on the next loop, it's gonna be zero, so you just subtract zero. You could equally just check if it's zero, then return or something, it's up to you. Um, it's actually more efficient to do extra queries that aren't needed than it is to move a chunk in memory or move an entity to a different chunk in memory. So 
you know, I'm going to do more research on that kind of stuff, like which is better to do in certain circumstances. This works absolutely fine. If you're doing it like a million times a second, then yeah, it's going to have problems. You might want to just leave the component there. Removing components is okay if you do it every so often, which is what we're doing. We're only doing it every so often. So we'll go back to the player. They have block. We're going to press play. I'm going to pause so we can see it better in the entity debugger. So we go to the debugger. The player has 50 block. Now, as the projectile hits, Notice how the block has been removed, it's absorbed 50, and then now it's actually, uh, the player's got 100 health, and then they get hit by 50, and then 50 again, and they die. Okay, it works. Now let's say uh, we go to the player's block, and they only have 25 block. What should happen is the f this first projectile should bring the player down to 75 health. So if we press play and pause, go back to the player itself. So it's going to hopefully block 25 damage, and then pass on 25 to the health which is what it does there. It's now on 75 health, 25 dead. Okay, so that's it for this video. I know it was really short, but I hope you guys see how easy it is to expand already existing mechanics to add new mechanics on top in ECS and DOTS. So if you like the video, then please leave a like and subscribe, share the video wherever you can. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. But of course, before we go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rack, Yoris Letter, Hades Zorko, Rene, and Remy Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreons down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out by following on any of those, it would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time, and goodbye.